your party. Okay. There you go. And then I'm going. Mm -hmm. And then you scoot everything out the way and then try your best to get this. That itty bitty one is not going to go right up in there, but you know, to the best of your ability, you can. And like, that one's actually good. That one's good? It slid out, so it must be okay. Yeah. What is that? Somebody's phone. It's my work phone. Oh! Do oh. you want it? Okay. That looks neater. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, but don't let it unravel too much whenever you get ready to clip it. Do some up. She has a teleconference, but by that time, she'll probably be up under the dryer or either we'll be getting ready to style her. She's going to need a little bit more product. Cause I need to get to put too much product cause I hate when it like comes out when you like twist white. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's okay for you to, uh, and see this right here, this was uh, one of our mistakes. So if you see this, then you want to be able to catch that because if not, this hair going to dry like this and then she's going to have this frizzy, you're going to try mm -hmm. to put it in style and this is going to add a frizzy to your style. So you want to go back and try to catch that right there, tuck that bad boy right there. Knead it up real good, and there you go. That looks neat. And so, what did you say you were afraid of with the product? Oh, so like you put too much, and then when you twist it, and then the white stuff comes out. Yeah, um, I don't like that. You just got to get the towel and dab it off. It's better to have a little bit too much than not eat enough. But it's if you can really work out the ratio to what type of amount you would need to your product. Then that Cause I remember you told me to try to just work with the product that be on my hand. Mm -hmm. So I try to go once my hands are dry. Dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that way, one, I'm not using a whole bunch of my products and last longer, and two, it's all tasty. Mm -hmm. You don't never want to waste products like putting dollar bills down the drain. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. Oh, wait. Let me clean this up right here. Is that good? <laughs> So need it, need it, need it. I need it until it's all the way smooth and then twist. <coughs> How do you feel like this part right here looks? I got no nails. I know. <laughs> like, she tried it though. Doing? She tried she it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I always have to cut out because ever since I got my acrylic shaved off, like my nails are so unhealthy right now. So I just keep them short. So they grow in all other stuff right now. Hold on. Look at your part before you go. Yeah. With the comb help yeah. if you don't have like nails? I use the comb. That's what I normally use to kind of straighten my part. Yeah. I just comb down and, and up to try to prevent from snatching the hair. But and then I focus on not putting the product on yeah, the scalp, but just more so on the hair. Not this okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the scalp, you, you want to be able to put your oils and stuff like that. If we actually put the product on their scalp, like the oftentimes it makes them itch faster because the product is actually designed for the lock. Is that okay, Dre? You okay? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's another thing you got to be careful with your product placement. Whenever you're putting a new lock in it, 
you don't necessarily want to pull it out and readjust it. It's already it's already clipped in where you saw that it was comfortable for her. So you want to make sure that you just open it up and just slide it in there so you don't mistakenly poke them again. Because remember, everything that you do is making them feel a little bit more positive about you or a little bit more negative. And people may not say nothing, but those things do affect them. And it's a thousand different details to building your clientele. So in every possible way, you want them to always be comfortable. And communicate with them. And halfway through, you hear me always saying, you all right? You good? Is this okay? You know, just to make them feel welcome enough, like the door is open for you to say something. Because sometimes they won't. But I'm going to work us through this part right here. And then so I can get us to the top so that we can see how to smooth the edges. So that's the, the most difficult part is the perimeter, making sure that the foundation lays straight. Excuse me. Making sure that your clip placement is doing what it's supposed to do, where it's supposed to do it, so you're not clicking and poking her. Everything looks really, really symmetrical. I normally don't pile mine, so that way it's more airy. Mm -hmm. But then- So I have it like layered, That's not so that way the dryer can make the dryer. Yeah. Yeah. But then you wanna be making sure that it's dry, yeah, symmetrical and straight as much as possible. Well, that's what so I'm saying, can. so it's more airy that way. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know if I explained that right, but like, so you have the bottom ones, right? Uh huh. I right. do maybe like two or three rows in those, in those clips. And then the next one, I have those rows, and then those are a whole nother set of clips. Up higher? Yeah. Okay. So up that up way high. it lays flatter, and it's the air could get through there better, I feel like. I haven't tried it like that. Me either. That's, that's I don't know if I was doing. Because I'll be packing mines on the top, and I still find myself having to blow out after. Because there's so much here just in that one spot. Yeah. Because I'm constantly flipping. Do you have a water bottle at your station? Yes. Can you, uh -huh. can you uh, grab it for me so I can kind of re wet your race here? Yeah, do you know where we keep the oil in the wet? Maybe in the closet? Oh no, it's in one of those drawers. One of these drawers? What are you gorillas doing? Okay, so now the same way that I got her baby hairs up around the perimeter is the same way I'm getting the roots. They do not want to see no afro around their roots. They want that bad boy to be smooth. So you're smoothing it just like this. You can use your hands and smooth it just like so. You can uh, use your hands, and I won't put you in there with your bag. Yeah, you can I'm use your hands and smooth it just like so. Sometimes you're going to run into baby hairs that can't be smoothed in there that well. There's tricks for that when you get them up under the dryer, just like when we do the braids. You can lay the foam right there and then put a head wrap or the paper hair wrap on it. And then while they go up in the dryer and do that, but that's only necessary because I don't believe in going overboard in the product because the more product you lay actually on the scalp outside of like an oil or something, the more likely they are to itch sooner. So I am just going through and separating these so it'll look neater. This is how you smooth the edges in, nice and neat. Yes, I would definitely <coughs> like to see everybody do one on the edges so we can make sure all our edges are smooth. And you see me keep coming back because there's one little piece of hair right here. I'm starting to see circles, so I'm gonna do Yeah, that light uh, flashing your eyes. Correct. <laughs> Can somebody press the lever on the front of this chair and let her down a little bit? Good tall. Good tall one. There we go. Gotta help you a bit. So the idea of a coil is to use the actual curl texture to create a curl. 
how you get locks is you let that curl keep locking up and you just keep twisting it, okay? So, usually the product will be already on her hair. So this one is just an example to show you the technique. So when you comb in, whichever way the back of the comb is facing, that's the way the coil is gonna go, okay? The idea is so that once you comb the teeth through one time, these teeth should not go through the comb again at all. I mean, through the hair? Yeah, it shouldn't go through the, the hair again at all. So it should look something like this. Like a wand. And then you really don't want it to pile up on top of itself. And I like to use my hands to smooth it as we go. Just like so. Now, usually when your hair is a little bit more kinky, it'll stay within that coil a little bit better. But as you see, Margie has, her hair is, your hair has lost some texture on the ends. So either there's heat damage or tension damage or I don't know. The remainder of a rubber latch. It can be. It could be for almost five years now. Oh, okay. It could be if if, if she said it was five years unless she knows she's cut it all off. And so some of her hair still has it, but if they're getting locks and you know they're gonna get locks, you're probably gonna end up snipping this little piece right. off right there because that'll lock, but it's gonna do that lock bubble thing. So this is about the size that she wants them right here. She said she wants them about the size of uh, Edwina's client, Miss Nisha, but Miss Nisha's hair is a little bit thicker. So to get the actual size of Miss Nisha's, we would like have to do your locks about this size at the roots. And then it would look like this. So I'm gonna kind of do Margie's in a style and I'm gonna start from the back, but just kind of show you guys the technique you never let the comb go back in the hair, even if you have to take your hand and literally move the comb out the way. As soon as you let that comb go back into that hair and you twist it, it's going to be very hard to hide the fact that you just tangled the comb in their hair. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, just <laughs> be pulling and you be about to really pull their brains out trying to keep it a secret. So to avoid trying to keep it a secret, just make sure that you practice the technique enough to wear your comb is not going back through the hair. Twist it all the way down like so. Okay, so Margie's hair could definitely use a trim before we do this, but we're not going to cut it because we're just practicing the coils. But if ever you get a client like this and they uh, deny a trim, then it is going to be your responsibility to take this product, smooth it all the way down to the bottom. They usually won't, but every once in a while, you get somebody that is just still equivalating length with beauty, and you're gonna have a hard time getting that idea out of your head. Which means that if that's if this is one of those people, I would be clipping this hair all the way to the end to make sure it stays and making sure that product keeps it together. Okay. So, we're going to do the grab and go method with her back here in the back. I should have grabbed some more clips that I need to allow you little bitty ones to hold some stuff up out of my way. <laughs> and we're going to get to locking. Yeah. Oh, our hair is a little thinner on the ends. But it looks like she doesn't have those ends in the back no, there. So it may just be heat damage because you do partial weeds, right? Mm -hmm. So you leave out your perimeter. Yeah. So that's your perimeter you usually flat iron. Because in the back, you don't have that at all. The ends is curly. Like, it's two different curls. That's a good observation. <laughs> so boom. Oh, that's, that's pretty. Up. Hold on. Let me get that like right that. So you can see that. It's like a little. So then, yeah, if you want to up. say, you gonna do this as a style, huh? I just want to see how it looks. I'm not even gonna do the mod gel on you. I'm gonna do the twist lotion. Okay. So then that way, when it gets a little bit older, you could just get some oil and rub it on your hands and pull the curls apart, and then your curls will be smaller and defined. They kind of be like a style. Okay. 
That's going to be a waste of my jail. My jail is the ones you want to stay. But I mean, it would have worked too. But since we know you're going to rock it for a style, I'm going to use this. Ooh, oh, this is a new one. Hold on. Can you grab the one off my station? <laughs> yeah, hold on. Yeah. Oh, my This is a new one. Yeah, don't do that. How does it feel, Margie? Does it, does it feel the way you expect it to feel? This one is the natural twist and set. Yep, that came on my station? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta twist it all the way to the end. All of this hair right here is gonna go in there. Just like so. And it curls up just like a little curly cue. Beautiful and have And then I like this because this dries so shiny and cute. It really, really does. So the idea is that you really want to just let the curl bounce back up on itself. That just be cute. That's the idea. See, when you do the twist, that is for the. What is it when you separate the curls? Is that a twist out? Mm, it's like a twist out. Yeah. Small curls, twist out. You know, making that name twist out. But it's really a twist out. And see how this product kind of makes the hair a little slipperier? I think it's probably okay for you to start locks with this product, too. Uh, Mel, can you grab me like two clips so I can hold her hair right away so she don't gotta hold it? You want the butterfly clip? I like the alligator clips. Okay. And I think there's some in my third drawer in my station. And this is pretty much it. You comb through the roots and make sure you don't go back into the hair. And then you let it swell back up. Let's see, like this little piece right here. Just one little piece. You want that whole thing to stay in your nice and symmetrical because the details matter. I'll come back with my hands and smooth that bad boy right in there. And so if it is someone that has, um, if it is somebody that has, um, this type of hair and they want to lock up and it's not necessarily a style but they got that mixed hair it's kind of staying together not staying together mm -hmm. i'll go ahead and do the whole head and then i'll twist it twist it and clip that bad boy down you know okay yep right here okay so give me a second i'm gonna go check on jerry's head and as a matter of fact, while I check on Duray, you can try one right here. You can smooth it through the hair. You're going to come in and that's it. Yeah. And so the, I, I'm going to do all her hair coming over to the right. So that's why I'm pulling them all over this way. So it looks more of a style. So I'll go in, comb through it. Then you just make sure that that comb does not go back into the hair. And it's okay to smooth it with your hand to get the little itty bitty ones done and in there. It looks like a straw set curl. It does look just like a straw set curl. Except for straw set take a lot more time. And you can force it to be the size of the straw. So I'm going to let you practice. If this is a little bit too curly and Tangle together, just spray a little bit of this on it, and it'll it'll come right through it. Okay. Okay. I'll be right back. Thank you. 
This is actually really, really good. It's symmetrical all the way through. Almost all your hairs, except for like these little ones, but those are hairs that don't reach all the way down to the ends of her hair. So you can fix those by just running through like this and it will smooth them into there. If you were going to be locking her hair, then this would be okay. If you were gonna come back with clips and like twist this and make it a little bit tighter, then that would be okay. But if they're gonna rock something like this as a style, and you would want to get that comb all the way down to the root as much as possible. And then start twisting. And that is what smooths it out for you, just like that. So it kind of helps with turning the hair. And see, because mine are not like super perfect, it just starts closer to the base. Because her hair is still going to be allowed to have some texture left in it, you know. Oh, that's good. Let's break it down as far as we can. Yep, yeah, that looks good. So that okay. Now you gotta comb that comb right back in there. Here. Uh-huh, because it's gotta be combed all the way through for it to be consistent. If you begin to do it differently on the ends, it's going to make the ends more likely to come out. And then I want you to try it with the comb coil, the comb, the coil comb to see if that's easier for you. See, that's good. I see where the curl changes. Yeah, you can see where it changes a little bit because the one on the end is more of a finger comb. And so you want it to be like consistent all the way through. It's a very small, slight difference, which you won't really be able to tell with the naked eye. But like you said, this is more like a ribbon and then more like a straw curl. So you want it to look like a straw curl as much as possible. But then it could also be because her hair is slightly uh, finer right there in the middle as well.
Hello. I was like, do I have to? <laughs> Uh, is that better? Yeah, but you want to make sure you don't get that comb right back in there. Uh -huh. right, right now you double combed it, but just keep pulling it down as you twist because the product is slippery enough oh. to where you probably can get away with it. Or someone else with kinkier hair and yes. maybe if it was my gel... It would have really jammed you up a little bit and you would have had to stop and immediately yeah, as soon as you so notice that you do it, you got to turn around and go right back. I think that's a good one. And I think that the one right beside it that you did is also similar to that. The last one up top, I think that one is similar to that just because you can see Margie's hair is a little bit finer. Can right I try there. to redo this one with this yeah. one? Uh -uh. This one seems like a, I have more control. Okay. And those combs, I don't know where you can get them in Tucson. So, oh, they got them? Oh, okay. At the very okay. bottom, I have some of these ones. I just, I like combs. I'm a boy yeah. of combs, like pins. Yeah. Uh -huh. I didn't know the purpose of them. Yep, that's what it's a coil comb. Now, see right there, you're about to go back in, which is okay because of the texture of her hair, but you want to make sure that it's very slippery with the product. 